everybody. It's Lucky Gardenia, Diane, um, here coming to you from um, Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It is almost 12 o'clock on Sunday night and finally getting around to a video um, taping it that I had been planning to and you know on my to-do list for over probably two weeks. Never going to have the perfect timing, your hair going to be perfect. Sometimes you just have to go with roughly right and I don't think my lighting's doing too hot right now but um, just thought I would come to you with um, some life updates. I want some input from everybody out there if you could leave me some comments and I'll get to that on what I'm thinking about for maybe future um, episodes of um, my YouTube channel and I have some haul. I didn't think I had any but I actually do and then um, what I've been stitching or not stitching on and just go from there and then hopefully with your input I will have some new ideas and maybe share some new things that I haven't been including on um, my video channel, um, YouTube channel. I've wanted to get a cohort uh, partner in crime uh, back to have taught my daughters into at least being um, a guest appearance with me. So that's what I was thinking about. Um, wanted input from everybody. I do live in Texas. I'm a native Texan. Um, my daughters are native Texans and they're in their uh, mid-30s and beautiful. You can look at my Instagram. I'm Lucky Gardenia on Instagram or I'm on Facebook Diane Rivera and pretty much can see my life. Um, you can see my dogs, you can see the Tutu Sisterhood, you can see family events and things that I may have touched on. I have not included that, um, I don't think any pictures of cross stitching, but I plan to probably add some more um, as I go further. I, I've been noting on my both Instagram and Facebook when the last video I uploaded and hopefully um, reached out to some people. I did get some comments back from some of my friends, some from high school, some that were Apache Bells with me back way, way long ago, um, that are, are doing cross stitching also. So as I've said, I think probably in my first episode, you know, I was getting into some embroidery with wool and um, as a suggestion, a floss tube video popped up that YouTube had um, it just came across my feed. I thought, oh, what is that? You know, and got exposed to the whole brand new world of cross stitch, which is leaps and bounds from the um, geese of the 1980s with bow ties. And um, anybody that was stitching back from that time will know what I'm talking about. So um, I love everything that the cross stitch community is doing on um, Blast Two. And it's very positive and uplifting and I, I don't just talk about um, stitching I do think you know I love hearing about everybody's life what they've been up to what their family is doing sorry my pugs are in here <laughs> she just hit the tripod but um, hopefully she'll settle down um, anyway so I, I'm going to include life updates and stitching and just anything I can think of of interest. So what I, I was thinking about is maybe in your, um, in my comments, I would love to hear from you if you have any questions about my life or living in Texas. Um, there are viewers from all different countries. I've been looking at some of the um, YouTube tools, um, looking at who's been viewing and there's quite a few from Great Britain, Canada, um, Australia, um, just different areas. And I thought, I love to watch the, the YouTube channels from people um, that are in other states, other accents I can hear, other countries around the world. And I think that's the beautiful um, crossing of, um, you know, how we can cross everybody's life and learn a little bit more that we're pretty much the same and um, can bring us together with a, a 
a hobby, a craft, an art that we all love. Plus, get to know a little bit about each other, and I know um, just from watching many YouTube channels that there are friends that <laughs> become really awesome that meet through YouTube channels, talk offline. Um, one thing that I do know that happened, I believe this weekend, and it was StitchCon. Um, it's just keep on stitching, um, I think, local store that with them, um, they decided to have a convention. And as unlikely as it is, back about, um, it was when my dad was still alive and was ill and I got um, an envelope in the mail and it was from Stephanie, it just keeps stitching. And um, their local store saying that they were looking for um, YouTubers that were, uh, you know, had plus two channels to come and be, you know, guests and speakers or whatever at this event. And at that time, you know, with a parent gravely ill, work was really busy. I haven't really traveled much um, because of um, being with my dogs and Birdie's been ill recently. So wasn't really a consideration, but been watching the buildup of all that, you know, I think maybe 100 to 200 people are going um, that were there this week. Can't wait to see what happened. I um, was kind of hoping we'd see some live video and hopefully those will start popping up uh, from the various, I mean, they had tons of um, YouTubers that have uh, plus tube channels that were attending. So I put myself on the waiting list for next year. So hopefully I can um, get it together and my life will be where I can, can make a trip like that and meet people that you feel like you know from watching their videos and actually meet them in person. And I think that's what's so great about this medium is, you know, you take it into your control. It's not somebody saying, yes, you're worthy of talking about whatever you like. You just do it. And like I said, I'm a roughly right kind of person on some of this stuff. So everything's not perfect. Everything's not, core, you know, no uh, choreographed speeches. I've got a couple of notes. I've got a bottle of um, ice drink and some patterns sitting here and generally it's whatever pops in my brain and I can guarantee bloopers. I don't know how to edit yet. That is one thing I do want to learn how to do and I am seriously thinking about getting a different um, camera. I don't know what all the other YouTubers use as their camera for their videos. I was thinking about a GoPro. I have been out and about a lot lately. I thought that would be kind of fun to take you along um, on some of the events I've been going to or just life in Texas. Um, so let me get back to what I kind of did a squirrel um, rabbit run there. Anyway, um, would like questions on what maybe you have um, about my life or Texas or I've talked to my two beautiful daughters and they have um, agreed to come be a guest um, make a guest appearance on my um, video channel and I thought they neither one stitch so I'm still hoping to get them involved in that. My oldest daughter is um, finishing up her masters and so she's really busy but that should be finishing in the fall and my daughter Jennifer is an escrow officer and always busy you know she is just a tremendous businesswoman but they have said that they will do it with me. So since there's not much stitching that they can talk about, I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun if you have questions for them? Or, you know, look at my YouTube channels. I've talked about them. Look at my Facebook or my Instagrams and you may come up with some questions. Or I've also seen who's most likely to. And Rob and Jen are 18 months apart. And believe it or not, that was planned. Uh, I was from the generation where our mothers were stay-at-home moms and when you went to school you were looking to get married and have children and that's pretty much what I did. I was married um, young and um, had a mission to, <laughs> to have a baby and within a couple of weeks of being married I, you know, I did the old thermometer um, method and 
I was quite successful Thanksgiving, um, like not even two weeks after I was married. But um, and then I wanted my daughters or my children to be close together so they could be friends, hopefully. And um, lo and behold, Jennifer um, came 18 months later, and God bless me with two daughters that are best friends and have joint friends between them and live in the area and both are successful in different areas and gorgeous inside and out. Um, Robin has a, a really big heart for, for dogs and she's got, a, both of my daughters ended up with really big dogs. And I think anyone that's watched my channel, you know that I have two little pugs, not low weight pugs, but relatively um, small dogs that are happy to stay inside and stay out of the heat and both of my daughters have really big dogs. Um, Robin has a gorgeous dog and I can't even describe it. It has kind of like a nose of a uh, collie, uh, so to speak, over 100 pounds, beautiful, beautiful dog. His name is Shiner and that's because she said he was um, the color Shiner beer and makes sense to me. <laughs> because I love beer. Um, Jen has, um, loves Weimar Reiners and she has Trig, Trigger, and he's her second um, Weimar Reiner. She originally had years ago gotten her first Weimar Reiner named Jade and she had Jade color eyes. And I can remember from when Jen was t little, she said, I'm, I want a Weimar Reiner. And by golly, she did. As soon as she could get her own place and dog, you know, on her own, that's what she did. And they've also recently acquired another um, four-legged family member, and her name is Charlie, and she is the most adorable, some kind of bird dog. Her face is brown, but then she's like, her, her body is white with some brown spots. So she's named Charlie, like Charlie Brown. So I thought that was adorable. Um, she did give Jen and um, her husband quite a scare. They were out walking around. I think it was Grapevine Lake. And, you know, what's a bird dog going to do? They see a lake. I think she was off leash and she jumped into the lake. Well, she started swimming like really far away. And um, Jen and um, Dylan were just really freaking out. And, you know, I happened to call her at that time and she was frantic. And thank you. Um, to God that they were able to get Charlie back to shore and um, those instincts are really strong when you have a hunting dog or a bird dog and she was just out I, I mean she was going across great by and you know I, I don't I can't remember they had to get in the car to go chase her or whatever but um, anyway so that was a recent escapade that Jennifer had to uh, manage through but she did and then I was talking to my daughter Robin and she, she was walking the dog. She calls me when she's walking the dogs and just love chatting with her. I used to, when my mom was alive, we would talk almost every day. We were late night people. We would talk for hours. We had the same type of humor. I just adored her. And Robin has, we've been talking more often and she walks the dogs, we talk, um, and she's like, I'm walking the dogs. So I thought, okay, she's walking um, Shiner, and her boyfriend, Carlos, has a dog. Um, and I thought they were, she was walking them, and she said, oh, no, we've <laughs> come across another dog. And Carlos had brought it home. It was a stray, and she had taken it immediately up to see if it was microchipped. It wasn't. Put it on the neighborhood app you know, asking, does anyone know this dog? And uh, really sweet, like a one-year-old dog. It, it's kind of a rust-colored and has really different features, facial features. But um, she did the right thing. She went to go see if it was microchipped. Uh, it wasn't. She's taken it in for shots. And um, with the help of a fostering um, rescue group, I believe that they're going to get her spayed and get her taken care of and somehow I think it may be a foster failure which of any of you who have never been around rescues 
foster failures are when you bring in a dog, um, like the pug rescue, the DFW pug rescue, usually have about a hundred dogs in foster homes. That's there is such a need for families that have the ability to take in these dogs, take care of them, and hopefully find their forever homes. Well, at least with the pug rescue, the foster family always have the right to adopt. If somebody comes along and wants to adopt one of the fosters and they ask the foster family, you know, would you want to adopt or are you going to, you know, allow these others to adopt it for their forever family. So um, when the dog spends a lot of time with your in your life, you care for it, you love it, really fits in, a lot of times the fostering family ends up um, acquiring them as a foster failure and they become a full-time member of the um, family. So anyway, just a um, shout out to all those that support rescues and can't talk highly enough of the DFW Pug Rescue. They do have a Facebook page. Um, they take in, as I've said before, not just the young and adoptable um, pugs. They, they rescue them. They go to other states when they shut down these horrible puppy mills. They have had real surgeons, plastic surgeons come in and fix horribly abused dogs um, that need facial reconstruction and they are so devoted to the breed. And I can tell you I've had four pugs that I've um, adopted. Sorry, the color keeps going in and out of this video and I'm not quite sure why, but um, I'm sorry, it looks like I'm going blue. I was like a Christmas tree with a, a light going around. So um, hopefully it's not too distracting. Maybe it's because I'm moving around, but I do talk with my hands. Um, let me see what else I was going to tell you. I probably jump topics here, but um, the only interesting thing that I think I can share with you off the top of my head is recently I went to a Rangers, uh, Texas Rangers baseball game. And I haven't been to a major league baseball game in forever. And boy has the way the the, the game is and the activities they have during the games and just fun things to get the crowd involved. It was it was wonderful. I am not a sports fanatic, but I would definitely um, go to another Rangers baseball game. Now I will tell you, <laughs> highly recommend that when you have to park and you're not at like the premium parking where they you know, are valeting your, your car, please take a picture of where you are, the parking lot you're in, not just the name of it, but what are the local surroundings. Um, I had no idea how long baseball games go, but that was really late. I had gotten um, some new Converse Chucks um, that day, and being the ridiculous person that I am, I wanted to wear them um, to the game, you know, I had to wear a Texas Ranger t-shirt, wanted um, blue Converse to go with that, and I ended up with blisters to no end. And then we got lost. Um, there was a group of us that <laughs> had parked. We knew it was parking lot M. We asked people which way it was, and the police kind of pointed us in the totally wrong direction. You know, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to be airlifted out of there because of my um, blisters that were just incredible but it's one of those times when why it's happening you you're like this is so horrible and I feel so bad that it's gonna be such a memory maker and you know you just laugh about it after the fact we did end up we re it was everybody had gone all the all the parked cars were gone so that was gonna help us find where we had parked but um, they have these golf carts that will you can pay at the beginning of the start of the game you pay like some of them are like fifteen dollars a person to cart you from your car up to the uh, stadium and it's like no way were we gonna pay fifteen dollars a person but it was the end of the night they wanted one last thing and um, he took pity on us and we actually found the car so we could make it home um, but let me show you I, I do love Converse, or we call them Chucks, and 
I have to show you. These are a pair, and yes, I do wear checks. Uh -huh, even the AJM, it's never too old that you can't wear Doc Martens or checks or, or any shoe you want. So these are the ones that I have been wearing for, I would say, over 10 years. And a friend had told us about, um, in Great Dine Mills Mall, it's an outlet mall, that there is a Converse outlet. So I went over there, like I said, I was on a mission to get some shoes that match, but on the sales rack, I don't know if you can see these. Um, they're gorgeous. They are some type of um, digital art on here. And what I didn't realize is it has roses on it. And I'm an Apache Bell, tried and true. Although it's not a yellow rose, it is a pink rose. But um, the Apache Bells are the yellow roses of Texas. And you can find them um, on YouTube and you can search for them on the internet but this is one of three pair that I got and these were an absolute steal I think they were like $24 and I don't know if you can see but I now have pads in the back of here and what one of my friends had to tell me is Diane you got your shoes like laced up too tight you loosen them you know and um, crazy me I'm just tying them like you would you know if you're gonna go run a race and you're gonna have them tied so anyway it was a learning experience it was funny um, but anyway check your outlet stores um, highly recommend Chuck's and let's get maybe to some stitching um, oh one more thing I was gonna tell you um, yesterday out with some friends and um, went to this little dive to go eat some um, fried catfish and we're gonna go see a movie and plan to see Oceans 8 or Avengers and totally got to the um, place that was showing the movie and sold out um, so thought we were maybe gonna go to a um, another showing and so we're heading that way and, and oddly enough we're over where I grew up as a kid and I grew up in Richardson so we went and drove through the old neighborhood and just can't tell you how, um, it just takes you back in time. And I don't know if you're familiar with that song by Miranda Lambert, if you're a country western fan, um, The House That Built Me. And that song says it. I mean, when you go back, the neighborhood has changed. Sometimes the neighborhood that I grew up in, it, the houses have been updated. One house that was like catty cornered across the street had totally been torn down and there was this mega house that was like um craftsman styled humongous house that gorgeous that you know had just been built and i've gone down that street before and it was just incredible that somebody had the money to come in buy an existing home that was probably really expensive knock it down to the ground and rebuild a very large home, very large, beautiful home. Um, it was quite amazing. Um, was happy to see that my house that I grew up in had changed, the painting was changed, the, they had done something really cool with the front sidewalk. Um, but it, the, ba the bones were there and it, it was good to see it. I know um, my mom grew up in University Park in Dallas and the same thing happened that was you know a nice area of um, the Dallas area and DFW and people who had money just came in and bought up homes and knocked them down and just rebuilt and it really is sad I I'm one of those people that um, most of my house are things that are not new everything has a meaning um, this is an antique desk you know it's just I've got antique doors right here that pink, pale pink, um, yellow, and mint that are antique with the old glass doorknobs that are hinged together as a door, a uh, room divider. You know, I just, that's my kind of style. So anyway, had the, um, went back in time, driving through, you know, going by my high school, by elementary, and it just was heartwarming. So. 
if you're able to do that, I highly recommend it. And it's amazing how, you know, it's, I've been out of that area for, I, I hate to tell you how long, um, but it's been a long, long time. And it's just heartwarming to go back and, and remember some of the fondness, um, memories that, you know, you just forget and the neighbors you had and, and you know, I lived in a time period where we didn't lock our doors, all the kids could go out and play, uh, we stayed out late at night, you know, gazing at the stars looking for um, UFOs, you know, it was, it was a really good time and it was really safe time and although those times have come and gone, it was nice to see the house was still standing. So, um, I guess what I'll move on to is tell you what I've been working on, what I've been doing. Um, I have, since I last um, spoke to you, uh, God, it's probably been over a month, which is amazing. I, I thought I'd get to this sooner, but life happens. Um, I did, at that time, I told you I bought a, a light that uh, could either be a, a standing light next to a chair or a bed, or it collapsed down to a, like a table lamp and it had a um, LCD I think it's called lighting and you know you can make it brighter and brighter and it had magnification I think it was 3 or 3.5 um, magnification and it makes all the difference in the world now the person I saw that said it changed her life she was able to stitch on 40 count not <laughs> the case with me um, I think unfortunately I'm going to have to stick with Ada for the most part maybe even weave and uh, you know that's just the way it is sometimes you just go with what you're able to do and I, I know it looks beautiful on nice pieces of linen you know 32 count um, one over one or whatever it's just I, I, I just can't really see that well so um, I'm going with what I'm able to do and I'm currently, just because my life is so kind of crazy, have you ever had those times where, um, I think I've shown you the, the pattern that I was going to work on, the abstract pug, or you do uh, heaven and earth design, or a shadow lane, and, you know, using all different kind, you know, maybe within a hundred, you know, a 10 by 10 block of stitches, you know, you're using Lord knows how many different colors. Um, and trying to keep to the correct pattern and, and to me that becomes stressful so given um, what I'm able to do and feel like I can mentally function with I, I've gone with some that are just almost mono um, you know I have one color and I'm working on a um, long dog sampler and I bought so many of them I'm kind of pulling different elements um, like an alphabet and then different um, patterns from each of the different samplers that I've purchased. So hopefully it's going to come together. If not, it's therapeutic. As I've said in the past, it's more about um, the process and not really the outcome. And so to get back to the light, I set up that new light in my bedroom so I can do it right before I go to bed and can get some done, watch um, YouTube videos or you know Hulu or Netflix and um, you know get some stitching in even if it's just 15 minutes and it's very helps my stress level and um, then I got to thinking gee I want to buy a, a chair that would really be comfortable um, set up an area where I can just sit the dogs can come you know either jump on the chair or be by me and cleared off a chair that I had a bunch of stuff on. I had purchased a, um, it's almost like what you see on CSI. It's really heavy duty metal and I lost the clamp, but I found on Amazon, like you can find almost everything, something that it would work. So I've set that up where I've got the a little table set next to it where I can clamp on the, the light, which is really heavy but the magnification is great it's very well lit it's not lcd because um back when i got it probably 20 25 years ago they didn't offer that but it works great um also i 
Well, oh, I had this. I'm trying to think of the name of the frame. I got it from the UK. It um, starts with an L, and it's just, I know I've talked about it in one of my other videos, and I'd have to look it up. But um, I think it's the Lowry, the Lowry frame. And so I've got that. Um, I had bought it, never really put it to use. So I have that anchored under the chair. I'm using um, Q snaps, and by golly, it works. And so I'm good to go on either sitting in the living room or in the bedroom. So I made some progress. I actually have. Um, Nothing to show you yet, but I have started um, the Lung Dog Sampler and actually started the Abstract Pug. And I think I told you that I had ordered a full kit, and I think it came from the UK, and it was Frida. It was called Abstract Frida Kalo. And it actually came in, and you can see it, hopefully. I have not started it, but um, what I've realized on these full coverage type of pieces for me, you know, they're, they're multiple colors. It's one of those that are more complicated that the pre-gridded um, canvas, Ada, um, really works well for me. And um, I was able to have find sizes that both the abstract pug um, pattern will fit on it and so will this um, abstract Frida Kahlo. So I'm excited about that and they're just waiting to go but right now i think i'm just focusing on something that's not so complicated and just for the purpose of enjoyment and um, stress relief but I, I have bought other things so i do have some haul to share i'm kind of on a frida kick so found a couple of cool designs besides this one and i did find this on etsy and um, although it was not cheap, I